Hello all, I am Dr. Niaz Hassan. I work as a junior consultant pediatrician in KT City Hospital. Today I am presenting an interesting case that we came across a week ago in our OPD and it is quite a rare case nowadays in our scenario. An eight and a half year old male child uh, with successfully treated acute lymphoblastic leukemia at the age of two and a half years and he was brought to our outpatient department with his current symptoms which started a week ago. His illness started as a prickling pain with an erythematous scapular lesion in the flexor aspect of his right wrist. From the third day onwards, the lesion started to advance proximally and it slightly elevated and moved like a snake as it advanced to about 7 cm from its origin over a week time period. He also complained of itching in the area surrounding the lesion. He used to play and interact very closely with his pet dog, which was bought a month ago. Now uh, you can see the picture of the lesion here. Altogether, his symptoms and clinical findings raised the possibility of a cutaneous larva migraines and hence we started him on albendazole for three days, oral antihistamine for his itching. And local mild steroid was also start, started for topical application after op, op, obtaining expert opinion. And he was advised to review after three days of treatment. He reported on the fourth day uh, when the lesion was like this as seen in this picture. It took a lateral turn on the next day of starting treatment and it stopped advancing, advancing further. His pain and itching resolved and he is happy now. Hence, we stopped all the medication and advised him to report a week after. N now, I would like to invite my respected teacher and a great pediatrician, Dr. Santosh Kumar sir, to share his valuable thoughts on it and to add up to our knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Niyas. I fully agree with your uh, diagnosis and management. Serpigenous scores, documented progression and contact with a dog makes the possibility of dog hookworm causing creeping eruption. Of common ailments, hookworm has got a larva that penetrates skin and hence thought of hookworm rather than any other worm. The egg that comes out of stools hatches, becomes larva, molds twice and becomes infective filariform larva which penetrates human skin. And after reaching human uh, within the human skin, it realizes that it has uh, reached a wrong host. It cannot penetrate the basement membrane, gets stuck there. So it can move only horizontally, it cannot go deeper and so it gets stuck there. Suppose we do nothing, it will die off in say two to four weeks. That is the usual period of survival of this uh, larva in the soil. Documented migration is the key to the diagnosis because a serpiginous itchy margin may be there even in uh, tinea corporis. So it is the um, documented migration that is most important. Can human hookworm cause the same larva migrants? Yes, but uh, human hookworm, the larva when it comes into the skin, it, it can easily penetrate the basement membrane and go into the blood. There is no reason why it should stay in the skin and produce the larva migraine. So it is very unlikely, although it is not impossible. Regarding this picture, usually uh, it is a little more pinkish and the usual areas involved are the lower limbs and the buttocks because of the bare feet walking and the bare bottom sitting. And uh, in a school age child of this age, the upper limb getting affected is uh, rather rare. <clears throat> treatment with albendazole for three days is uh, enough, the same uh, treatment that we give for hookworm. However, I personally have used uh, albendazole for uh, three to seven days up to, basically because waiting for the uh, arrest of migration. But it is okay that you stop at three days and if uh, recurs, we can give a single dose ivermectin. Local steroid is not recommended, although I myself have used both local steroid and crotomintone locally to alleviate uh, itching. 
and this is not supported by evidence. In case of local infection, I tend to use antibiotic also in case of uh, secondary eczematization. And this antibiotic is for fear of uh, acute nephritis following secondary infection with streptococcus. This child is described as a child who has recovered from acute leukemia, but that's five years back. So it is very unlikely that this child is in any way immunologically abnormal. But suppose the history is that the child is on treatment for uh, leukemia or recently treated for leukemia, then there is a possibility of immune suppression and then comes the possibility of uh, strongyloides stercoralis, whose uh, larva can penetrate the skin and produce creeping eruption. Actually, the strongyloides uh, egg hatches in the intestine itself and what is coming out in stool is the larva. So the larva will penetrate the perianal skin or the buttocks or the inner thighs or maybe the lower abdomen. Those are the sites that uh, we expect in uh, this strong alloides, which is otherwise called, uh, the, the la creeping eruption due to that is called a larva currents, meaning that uh, it is a very fast moving, racing or running. And it is because of the auto infection that uh, this creeping eruption due to strong alloides happens. But uh, as far as immune suppression is concerned, we are more worried about uh, the disseminated infection or hyperinfection, not really the creeping eruption of larva currents. Thank you, Dr. Niaz, for uh, sharing this interesting case.